for today's Mr. X's news service, we're going to be looking at a Western Electric test phone. As you can see, these are made by Western Electric for the Bell system. They're cast entirely out of rubber with the receiver, microphone, and dial all in one piece. As you can see, the dial is very small, very condensed, and you can see that they only put the first letter associated with each number on the dial instead of all three letters associated with each number. So instead of A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, etc., you just have A, D, G, and so on. As you can see, it's a very compact dial, and you press down on these little spokes to rotate the dial. I'm not exactly sure what year or what model this phone is, although I have seen other test phones like this one and test phones that have large ordinary dials in them. More cumbersome and you would think they might be earlier models because of their large design or later ones because they had larger dials for convenience. This could be later because it's more compact or earlier because it's a little harder to dial than an ordinary phone, rotary phone. Here is a switch on the side that says talk and monitor. I'm not exactly sure what this does, although based on the labels, I'm guessing that you can switch this phone between the, a talk function, sending a signal to test a line, or monitor, listening in on a line to see if it works or not. If you know anything about that, leave a comment below. As you can see, there's a clip hook and the pristine cloth cord. I think this is original. If not, it's still in very nice shape for this cord. Here are the alligator clips. These alligator clips were used to bite into a line. So, you would take out the clip, stick the line in there, and then bite down on it. We're not going to do that here, of course, but this method ensures that the line will not be damaged much and you can still test the line by tapping into it. This is a very ingenious design of phone. It precedes a lot of other handsets like this United example that have a piece. It does not have a ringer, but this is more compact than something like a 202 or 102, which does not have a ringer, but is a full-size desk set. In addition to the Western Electric test phone, we also have another oddity. A solid cast Western Electric F1 handset. Now what I mean by solid cast is there are no wires running through the actual handset itself. As you can see, take out the cap and microphone, you don't see any wires running through the actual handset handle. Instead, you just see screws going to the bake light. And they go to metal that's cast into the handset and then goes to the other end. As you can see, this is a pretty early handset, the date of 1938. It's a little smudged there, but it says it's 1938. And also notice that it has very fine threading, as opposed to some later threading, which is coarser. The other, look at the other end with the receiver. As you can see, No wires, just the metal and the bake light. This is a pretty ingenious design, predating integrated circuits by about 20 years because integrated circuits came out in the mid 50s. And notice how a later handset type, the G3 from the 1960s, does not have a solid handset but instead 
a hollow one. As you can see, hollow. And notice the threading is a lot coarser. Now in the background here, I have an archived eBay page. As you can see, it's not perfect. But this is a solid cast Pekin Red handset, which is, for this model, rare. As you can see here, it says, it is a solid casting with no wires running through the middle. The transmitter and receiver caps are fine threaded. All the other color 302s you will find are hollow and have coarse threads in the caps. This in itself is very, very unusual. This may be a one-of-a-kind handset. Because this has to do with colored handsets versus black ones, I'm not completely sure if the solid cast black bake light handset is actually rare at all. But it's still a pretty interesting thing to note. And it, considering its early date, it's also very unique in that respect too.